Hello, friends. Today, it's a long one. This tutorial is about 20 minutes long, but I think you're going to love it. It might be one of my very favorite pieces I've ever made, but it took me almost two hours. So I've shortened it and sped it all up to make it just about 20 minutes long. So hopefully you can follow along. So get started. As always, you're going to want your watercolor paper and you're going to want some tape. You're going to want to tape down those edges, get any goopers off of there. Now, so I did have a reference that I used for this. Uh, and if I can find it again, I will for sure leave it in the description. But of course, I didn't save the link and I didn't save it to my computer. Super sorry. I totally failed. But what we're doing here is we're separating your paper into thirds. The top two thirds is going to be a sky. The bottom, mostly third, is going to be ocean. Uh, but the top half inch of the third is going to actually be mountains. Yes, they are going to be small. But please do this step. It's super important because you have to separate your sky and your land. So... We are doing a landscape painting today. Landscape art is something you probably see all the time. You've probably seen it online. You've probably seen it on social media. Almost all outdoor photography <laughs> is landscape. Uh, landscape just means you are looking at land and it is beautiful. <laughs> I know, I know. That's so great. I'll put the real definition down in the description below. If you're trying to do a paint, paint along, right now would be a really great time for you to go ahead and pause the video, get your paper set up, and get that half inch line drawn across the middle. And then go ahead and fill in some mountains. They can be jagged, they can be crooked, they don't have to be perfect little mountains. These are just guidelines you will just have the slightest outline of them left when you are painting. You'll notice I'm drawing quite dark. You do not have to do that. Um, in fact, I would recommend not doing it because I will just be erasing these almost completely in just a few minutes. So I'm just working on how I want things to look. Um, I know it seems like an extra step if you're drawing these and then mostly erasing them but you really need to do it so that you can see where you have stuff. It will make a lot more sense when you draw the sky a little bit later. You definitely want to have the space separated out. I promise. Just follow along. Also, <laughs> because this tutorial is so long, I don't really want to talk through the whole thing. I guess I will if you need me to. Okay, so what I'm doing here is using my rubber kneaded eraser. It's like clay, but it's actually an eraser. So like it's just a very malleable eraser and I'm getting all the dark marks away. So you can barely see it. But this is super important because once you've watercolored over top of pencil, you cannot erase the pencil. And I didn't want these lines to be there. So I'm making them as faint as I possibly can while I can still see them. And what you should do right now, right now, which I didn't do until much later, was put a piece of tape all the way across your paper over top of your mountains to separate. It'll make sense in a minute. Now what I'm doing is I'm testing my colors. I am still not quite sure what color palette I want to use. I'll have an, a night sky, but it's like a galaxy night sky, and then I'll have an ocean that's kind of reflecting it. So I went ahead and picked the colors I wanted and I'm getting started with pink in the ocean. I know that seems crazy, but it will make sense when you see the night sky. And it's about this time when I realized, oop, I should probably put some tape on here. So don't do what I did. Do that beforehand. It'll make things a lot easier. So what I'm doing is I'm filling this section with water, just watering it all down, making it super wet because that is going to give us the really beautiful crisp ocean lines that we want. I'm going to make things kind of look like waves. You'll notice that I started with pink because it is the lightest color that I'm using 
and it doesn't fade with blue very well, so I definitely wanted to leave some pink areas. Otherwise, it would get all muddled, and we don't want that. I'm adding some green, and this is all water, some green and some red, just kind of making it all blend together and look kind of watery. Now, I am thoroughly wetting the sky portion. Now, this is why the tape is super important. You really want there to be that definition and the line and the barrier to protect your, your paints from melt mushing together there. I don't want my sky bleeding into my water. getting it a little bit more wet. I'm going with purple on this side. Uh, you'll notice that I've put some reddish pink and orange on the one side and purple and blues on the other side. And now I'm adding in blacks and navy because I want that side to be really dark and the other side to be a lot lighter. Now, notice the giant white spot in the middle. This is super important. Please, please, please do not cover that area with color. I am going in with a silver, like an actual glitter silver paint and putting it in the middle there and I'm kind of making the edges bleed, but I want it to look like an amazing star galaxy nebula type thing. It needs to be a light, a very light space. Now, if you don't get galaxy on the first try, don't worry. Painting a galaxy took me so long. I have so many failed galaxy paintings because I just couldn't get it. It takes a lot of water. It takes a lot of just mushing your colors together. And I also, <laughs> I use my, um, my towel, my paper towel that I have next to me. Actually, it's an old flower sack, not a paper towel. You could use what you want though. Uh, and I dab colors quite often. Oh, there we go. Dabby, dabby, dabby. Dab, 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 because I want the faintest colors. I don't want it to be super dark and bold. I want it to just be super cute. Um, I'm picking a hair off here. I don't know how a hair got there. Stupid hair. Okay, now I'm darkening up this side. Also, notice how I started with all the light colors first, and now I'm darkening it. That is because with watercolor paint, it is really hard to go from dark to light. It is much easier to do light colors and then add darkness where you think you need it, because uh, that's just how watercolor paint works. It's hard to layer when it's all wet. And to make a really great galaxy, it really needs to be pretty damp the whole time. I decided I needed some more colors. <laughs> So that's what I'm doing and the I'm adding them into the water because the water has dried up a little bit uh, It comes to a point in all of your paintings where you just need to stop and let things dry and that is exactly what I did here It was getting too wet to continue on. It was just mushing together So I let it dry worked on the other part and now I'm doing letting the top part dry and working on the bottom part again Also what you can do which I do this quite often is I bring my hair dryer in and I just hair dry the whole thing because it really, that heat and the hot air really um, makes things dry nicely without getting all bendy or warpy. So it's a really great way to speed up the process. Now, you'll notice I splattered some white watercolor paint on. It was way too early to do that. <laughs> I should not have done it yet. It was not right. Okay, so here I have let the thing dry completely and I am adding the stars back on again because it just didn't work before. It's way too wet. So there we go. I'm adding in my stars and my galaxy and like star reflections in the water. And I've decided here in a couple places, I just want to darken it up and make it like mushy together more. And it's really great. Um, for this painting, I've used orange like a corally pinkish color, blue, teal, purple, and then this maroon color. And I'm really digging this maroon as like a highlight almost. And I'm using the same colors minus the purple and the black in the water. Okay, now what I'm doing right now is I'm taking silver paint and I'm just going in and lightening the areas up and mushing them together to make it look like it's stardust and like the star clouds. 
and I'm adding in water highlights and I'm super happy with how it looks. Just adding a couple more stars, like some more galaxies and just, you know how beautiful the sky looks on a dark night. Mm, chef's kiss. This is perfect. Just a few final touches here and there. Darkening up where that uh, the land mass will be because it will be a little darker right next to land because we'll have those those uh, mountains casting a shadow. I've deemed it dry enough to pull the tape off and now I'm going in between my mountains and adding in the same sky color. Now I actually do mix the color that I'm using in with the space that I'm having. So I'm taking that orange color and I'm mixing it in and blending it in with the night sky so that you can't really tell that there was a line there at any time. Doing the same with this burgundy and red and I'll do the same again with the purple and blue. See right there I needed it to just blend a little better so I just put some more red up in the sky. Now, don't worry if you don't get this right away. It's a learning process. And it's okay if your first one doesn't look very good. Try again. Try again and again and again until you start getting used to it. Here, I am mixing my purple and blues so that they blend together really well. And I also am adding some green. So these are taller mountains I'm putting here. And in the reference photo that I used, which hopefully I find for you, if I do, it'll be in the description, in the reference photo, it's like a green globe coming from the tall mountains. Okay, so now I'm using a micron pen. I'm using the brush pen because that's what I like to use, but you can use any micron pen as long as it's nice and thick and draw in a black line right above your water. I'm using colored pencils now to color in the background of my mountains. I am kind of just testing the colors I want. Um, I know I want them to be orangey pink, but I don't really know what I want them to look like. And by putting down a layer of colored pencil first, I can actually go back over it with some watercolor, which you'll see me do in a minute. And it makes it look so cool. It's like a really nice wash and you still get the texture from the colored pencils. I'm doing it really lightly though, because I don't want it to be crazy dark. So on these, I used orange as a base with purple and pink on top, and then lots of orange over on the edge where the green will come from. See, here I go in with some orange paint some corally orange. I'm just making it all meld together there, giving it a nice wash. All right, there we go. Final touches right there. And I'm just pulling, you'll see I didn't add any color to my paintbrush, but I do have water on there and I'm pulling in that background color and making it look like the edges of those tall mountains. So it's the next day and you'll notice that I had a toddler come and graffiti my artwork. I'm not going to lie. I was mad. It was perfect. It dried so beautifully and it was just so gorgeous, but he took Micron marker and put it all over my ocean. He also ate all of my red paint. So that was gross. But I refuse to start over. I have already spent over an hour on this painting. So now it's time to spend another hour fixing it. So here we go. I am doing something that is a little risky. I am taking very thick watercolor paint and just putting it right on top. <laughs> I am doing my very best to stay in the same color family that I had been in 
and it's really hard, guys. This whole time, I'm just, like, in such a terrible mood. What is something I learned, though? I thought Micron pens were waterproof, and most of the time, they are. But as it turns out, if you are trying to put a lot of paint on top of them and rub on them enough, they do kind of start to fade and blend, but you cannot lose that dark, dark line. So I just continue to go over top of all of the lines. And because I'm going over top of those lines on this half of the painting, I actually have to end up darkening the entire body of water just to make it look somewhat okay and I have to basically do the whole water part all over again it was so depressing my friends so depressing so here I go trying to add white and then I'll add some more blue and some periwinkle colors I didn't really use before but that I need to use now to get the same colors that I created by mixing them also pro tip if you have to leave these out overnight to dry, one, put your watercolors away. Two, <laughs> put your markers away. <laughs> and three, if you can, just peel it off the table with the tape still attached and just stick it to the wall. Just stick it way up high <laughs> where no one can reach it and no one can mess with it. So right now I'm feeling pretty good about myself in this process because I'm like, oh, hey, look, I covered up all the marker. This is amazing. Yes. So I'm just darkening it up a little bit because <laughs> something I realize as it dries, uh, it actually starts bleeding through the paint again. So this will be a process we'll just keep going back to over and over again. But here I am taking my Micron pen the same one I used yesterday and the same one that got graffitied all over my paper this morning. And I am outlining my mountains. It is pretty awesome. It's pretty easy. Take your time with it though, because I went a little too fast and I wasn't crazy about how they're just kind of too mountainy. I don't know. I wanted them to be a little bit more jagged, but this is what I got. So I'm adding some in the front. And I decide that we need to texture the mountains. And I'm using this little Zentangle pen I have. And it's just a super fine tip, uh, kind of like a Micron pen. And I am going in and picking patterns I like. Now, you can't really tell in the video, but I have picked dots, lines, and X's. So that's what I do alternating patterns of all over the mountains. Uh, in these first few, I tried making like triangles and squares and making them that small was just really silly. So let's just go ahead, continue watching me decorate my mountains. Do you want me to sing you a song? I can, but I can't have any words because I can't use copyrighted music. So, um, boop, 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 Mountains, mountains, I am decorating mountains. Also, uh, this is the point where I noticed that actually you still can see the marker. So I'm going over things with white, just trying to distract from the marker bleeding through. It's going really well, actually. This is just a never-ending process of water. Mountains. Oh, this is really fun. I decided that my mountains were lacking something. So I added some teeny tiny black mountains in the front. Ones that you can't really see, but you could tell it's like a shoreline. So that's what I'm doing there. Adding some shoreline. 
and I decided some of the mountains needed darkened up, so I'm using a much bolder micron pen to darken them up and add some more detailing. I'm really glad that I decided to do this. It's exactly what the picture is missing. Okay, now I'm going to just go in and try to cover up the really dark marker spots that are bleeding through. I'm telling you, never ending marker bleeding. <laughs> But it's going pretty well. I will say, though, I was way happier with how my water looked before I had to fix it. I really like how it looked the day before when I went to bed. It was beautiful. Stinking graffiti artist. So I went in, added some more stars, and it is awesome. There we go. It's beautiful. Now you peel your tape off. Put your name on it, and you have created a masterpiece.